I go to meet them to cross me. And if there's a pedestrian bridge, I would rather climb it saying thank you. Like, I don't understand. You did carry us for free. You use your hand to select your courses. Remote classes that you can stay in your house and take. The minimum for international students is three. You just tight their face like this. Eh? As if people are fighting from somewhere. Use the all gender washroom. From your house to the bus stop, sun is shining. Heat will finish you. And we are still taxed for the warranty. Okay, they're going to block my account because someone tried to take my money. hi guys and welcome back to my channel if this is the first time here my name is judith and i'm an international student who just moved to canada if you're returning thank you so much for coming back to always watch my videos today's video is going to be a discussion sesh i'll be telling you guys all the culture shocks that i had since moving to canada everything that i've noticed that that seemed weird to me but i just had to um, adjust and cope I have 15 of them and trust me guys this this is something that you guys are gonna enjoy like you guys will enjoy this video a whole lot so just stick around and watch this video to the end so the first culture shock is my biggest flare. like it's my highlight like it's the highlight for me is crossing the road now for someone like me i used to have like i would not say a phobia but i was scared of crossing the main road back in nigeria but moving to canada now and crossing the road like crossing the road back in nigeria i used to feel afraid like i always wait most times i go to meet those road safety guys those yellow fever guys i go to meet them to cross me and if there's a pedestrian bridge i would rather climb it than cross for myself or if i don't see any of these two i usually wait for somebody else that is crossing i'll follow them and cross that's how bad it was but coming to canada crossing the road is not something you should be scared of because there are rules and there are laws that are put in place for such now there's a button at every intersection when you want to cross the main road when you press the button you just hold on for a while and then you will see a signal across from you telling you that you can cross okay there's a hand symbol that you look out for it when it is red you know that you have to wave but when it is white and then you see a, a, a walking icon you know that you can cross the main road and trust me every car will stop every car will stop for you to cross like you don't need to run when crossing the main road you walk and there have been instances where i see people don't press that stuff but when they say that there's no car coming at the moment and they start crossing the road and most times the roads are very 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 wide you get so when they start crossing the road the drivers coming from afar will just halt and wait for you to cross and now if it's a small intersection that doesn't have those buttons the moment you put your leg in fact when you stand by the sidewalk okay waiting for traffic to clear they would stop once they see a pedestrian standing on the sidewalk they just assume that you want to cross the road and they will stop for you you will cross the road peacefully and gently so this is my biggest flair because for someone that's always afraid of crossing uh, busy roads i came here and i realized that oh this is how it's done and it's my biggest flex of all time the next one is uh, saying thank you to bus drivers in canada i don't know if it's the same for other countries in the diaspora but here in, in canada when you get into a bus and you're coming down from the bus you go thank you and when i came here nearly i'm like why are they saying thank you like i don't understand you did you carry us for free you get you get it's just like entering bus from my two to um Oshodi. and then you come down after you've paid and you fought for your change and then you come down you're telling the conductor or the driver thank you they will even look at you like what's the word in this one you get but here it's not like that when you enter and maybe you get to where you're going to come down thank you and he goes you're welcome i do it most times but most times when i do it i feel weird but recently i just kind of like adjusted to it and most times I, I say thank you, most times I do not. It doesn't really change anything, but it's a huge uh, culture shock for me. And you don't pay with cash on the bus. You just tap your card on the scanner thing in the bus close to the driver and you're good to go. If you don't have the card, you use your coin. And for cards, students, we use our bus pass from school. It's subsidized and we use it to enter the bus. But you're not a student, you have to go to the transit station to get your bus pass i think in regina um it's 88 dollars per month the third one is paying for bags 
when you go to shop uh, shop right in nigeria after buying stuff they give you nylon right because they don't expect you to carry your the things you bought from their store on your head and be going but here it's not like that the reverse is the case here you have to pay for your bag here like this thing has happened to me countless times even to now i there are times that i go shopping and i forget to carry a bag and then i feel so oh god i feel so angry what i do now is i i stuff um the bags in every of my every of my school bag or handbag there's a shopping bag in it in case i just want to go to the market maybe impromptu shopping to just get something i don't have to start buying extra bags okay so you have to pay for your bags here you don't get a free bag when you buy stuff you have to buy your bag and the cheapest i've seen that bag is three dollars something cents it's expensive do you know how much three dollars is in naira it's expensive so you buy after buying the whole world in superstore um jose club in fact any store in this place you're expected to either come with a bag or buy a bag if you don't want to do either of the two you carry your car on your head and go so it's a huge culture shock for me number four is picking your classes hmm. now this one eh, like it's it's also a big flex for me honestly now schooling in naked day the there is a course outline or is it called no not course outline like there's a, a list of courses that you're supposed to take in your first year if you say most you are taking them and they are usually like 10 i've taken 15 courses in one semester before in naked day that's how crazy it was you get so it is already programmed like this is the courses that you're going to take but here it is not like that you use your hand to select your courses all you need to do is just have a list of the entire courses you need to take before you can graduate from that program when you have the list with you it is now up to you and your discretion to pick the courses however way you want to pick them so long as you pick a course that doesn't have a prerequisite for example now um you have to take two psych courses right now you have to take psych 102 and psych 201 now you cannot jump psych 102 and go and take 201 you can't do that you have to take 102 first before you take 201 so so long as the course doesn't have a prerequisite like it doesn't have like another course you need to take before you can take that one you are good okay so you pick your courses the way you want to before i moved to canada i had um i didn't know how to uh, register for classes i called i emailed student advising and you know begged them to help me register for my classes so they picked um statistics and some other courses for me on getting here i realized that stats is not something i want to take right now and i dropped it and picked something else something that i know that i wanted to take so you have monopoly of selecting your classes whichever way you want to you have to pick if you have you can check for the time if morning classes is not your thing you can take afternoon if you don't want afternoon you can take evening all you need to do is register on time because once the particular morning class is filled you're left with afternoon or evening or online or remote classes so just register on time you can pick your courses if you work in the morning can pick night classes if you work in the night you can pick morning if you work in the afternoon you can pick night or morning or you pick online or you pick remote classes that you can stay in your house and take so it's just it's just a another huge flex for me honestly the fifth one is graduation is in your hands ha i'm gonna make reference to naked day again now you're you're taking a two years um diploma program it is two years you're gonna finish no more no less except you have carryover that you have to write the following year the same thing applies here right it's in your hands because the the maximum amount of classes you are supposed to take here is five you cannot take more than five classes per semester remember i told you i've taken 15 um, courses in my school back in nigeria so here the the maximum amount of classes you're allowed to take is uh, five the minimum for international students is three so i take three classes every semester for instance you you're running a a two-year program right a program that's supposed to last for two years and you're taking three three classes each semester and probably maybe um spring and summer you don't want to go to school you want to go to, you want to use it to work you know to gather money now if you're taking three 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 if you calculate it you might not finish in that three years you might finish in maybe two years and a half or three 
But if you want to finish fast and you have the money, you can just take five classes every semester. For instance, you need to take 20 classes to finish a two years um, program. Now you take five this semester, you take five in spring, you take another five in fall, that's 15. Next January uh, winter, you take another five, that's 20, you're done. You finished a two year program in one year, one year and four months. But if you don't have the money, you're taking three, three classes. Now you take three in winter, three in spring, three in fall, that's nine. The next year you take the same thing, that's uh, nine plus nine, 18, you're still left with two. So you're finishing that two years program now in two years and four months. So graduation is in your hands. The more classes you take, the faster you graduate. The, little, the less classes you take, the, the, the more time it takes for you to finish your program. So graduation is in your hands. Number six, leaving the class. Hmm. When I attended my first class in University of Regina, there was this guy, his phone rang, and the lecturer didn't even care. He continued his lectures, and students were like, whatever, who cares, you know? And I was like, looking at the guy, like, I looked at the guy, looked at the professor, looked at the guy, looked at the professor, like, that's what I do for you. He didn't even care. Like, the guy just stood up with his phone, went outside to take his call, finished his call and came back to the, to the class. No one cares. Aside that, again, you're in class and it's boring. You're tired of the class. You want to just get out of there. No one is stopping you. Carry your bag and move. I attended the class yesterday and, hmm, oh my goodness. This class just started like in two, like in 30 minutes. What is 30 minutes? Like in 20 minutes. 20 minutes into the class. People are already carrying their bags and going. And the, the professor was like, who cares? He was just, he continued with his lecture. So you can, you can do that. If you're attending classes and you feel like it's boring or you have somewhere else that is important for you that you need to get to, carry your bag and go. Nobody cares. Number seven, Canadians are nice and they love greeting. Yeah, I love this a lot. They are super nice. They are always helpful. They always want to, when they see you that, that you're lost or you look lost, they will approach you. Are you okay? And they, want, oh, they always want to help you. And it's greeting. Mm, they love greeting a whole lot. You can be taking a walk. Uh, maybe you're going to the, to the bus stop to, take, to catch the bus. And then you see maybe uh, a Canadian couple. Maybe they're taking a walk or a jog. Or they are strolling with their dogs. And they'll be, hello. Hi. Good morning. You know, and it's, it's something that I love a lot. Like, it, I feel, it makes me feel welcome okay they would greet you there are times where you don't even want to greet like they will greet you and when they the way they will even greet you you'll be so happy to respond to the greeting but my brethren in this place hmm, they don't send your papa like you literally see a fellow nigerian from afar and you'll be excited like oh this guy looks nigerian you want to say hi they will just tight their face like this and eh? as if people are fighting from somewhere they will just squeeze their face when you see them that they have squeezed face like that you just face front and be going because you don't know how they will react to your greeting but the canadians that i've seen from a far self you've not you've not even gotten close to them they started oh hi hi that's how they are and they just love greeting and i love it number eight um lgbtq friendly this didn't come off as a culture shock to me because we know it's it's a common thing it's a norm it has come to stay right so but i put it in the list because coming here and seeing the extent at which it is welcome here kind of like it was overwhelming like i was like i knew it was welcome but coming here and experiencing it and seeing it like i was like oh wow so this is actually how it's done like you every public building you go to the restroom there's a male restroom a female restroom and a universal restroom okay the universal one it's either called a universal restroom or a um, all gender restroom so all gender restrooms meaning if you identify as a, a lady or and maybe you were born a man or you, you identify as a lady or as a woman you can use it all gender washroom right but if you are a woman and identify as a woman you go to the female a man you go to the male then universal rest, um, restroom or all gender restroom is for the um, lgbtq 
community so this came as a shock to me like even to restrooms yeah so it came as a shock to me but um it's cool so the next one is a climate shock <laughs> I came to Canada in April and it snowed two days before I arrived. So I met snow when I came. It was super cold. And everybody I have met be like, oh, are you cold? Hmm. Don't worry. When winter comes, you will see. And they keep saying this thing like, I know what I know what I went through when I got here. Like it wasn't snow. It's not two days before I got here. And it was as cold as that. And people are making me making me scared, telling me, oh, when winter comes, you will see cold minus 50 you are and i'm like if it is this cold now how colder can it get so i have not experienced winter um yet but the small one that i saw when i came mad so i can only imagine what the actual winter is going to feel like and the weather these days is just strange like it's not even for like i like saying it's not focused because this minute it is cold, next minute it is hot. It is cold in the morning, you layer up and you go out. Before you walk from your house to the bus stop, sun is shining, heat will finish you. So it's just like that. The, the weather is not just stable, it's, un, it's unstable. Honestly, it's really, really unstable. And 4 a.m., everywhere is bright. Like, what's happening? The phone I came here, I really struggled to adjust to that thing. I would wake up in the morning to ease myself and I look at the window, it's already bright and I'll be like, oh, I'll, I'll go to school late and I will check my phone after four, what's happening? And then you come back home, you look outside the window, everywhere is still bright, look at the clock to nine in the night. So the weather is just, it's just crazy. Number 10, Canadians enjoy conversations in loud tones. This one, it's always funny to me because you could literally be standing next to the person here and oh hi how you doing i'm good you are the person is standing close to you i went to the bank one day and it got to the woman in my front turn she went close to the lady over the counter and goes hi i really want i want to i have a problem and, and my card is not is not tapping i can't tap my card Everybody in that banking hall could hear her. Like, why are you shouting? You'll be in the bus now. And then they want to go and ask the driver something. Ah, uh, I need to get to... Everybody in the bus will hear you. Like, I don't know if they do it unconsciously or that's just how they like to talk. But, like, if I have encountered this with Canadians 10 times, eight of them speak in loud voices. So maybe it's just that how the way they talk. Number 11 is... Um, cashless policy here. I can't remember the last time I held Canadian dollars. That should be the week I got to Canada because I wanted to see what their money looks like, okay? And after that, I can't remember holding Canadian money. What do you need it for? Like, what do you need cash for? My husband um, worked in a bank in Nigeria, so he likes holding cash with him. Coming here now, he, he struggles with it because he touched his pocket, there's no cash. And he's like, what's all this? He said, you'll be seeing cards everywhere, okay? So it's just cashless. You don't need cash. What do you need cash for, honestly? Because you go to the store, you tap your card, and you're, and you're done. So you literally don't need cash for anything at all. Every store you go to, they have point of sale. So it's just like, you know, cashless. You want to enter bus, you tap your card. What do you need cash for? So number 12, no plagiarism. This has to do with school. Now, you know how schooling in Nigeria would have assignments, just go to Google, mm. copy and paste, submit, and that's that. During project too, you go to the cafe, project material they give you, mm -mm 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 -mm. that's that. If you try it here, if you try it here, mm. like during our orientation, they told us plagiarism is no go area here. If you do it, you are a goner, you can get expelled from school. Even if it's just assignment, you can get expelled from school. So if they give you an assignment and tell you 1,000 words, they expect that 1,000 words to come from here because you cannot have the same thoughts as the next person. And if your, if your work and somebody else's work maybe is similar, you both will be called by the dean. Hey, God, you will be called by the dean. And if you cannot defend yourself well, you are a gunner. So plagiarism is a no-go area here. 
13 is respect people's space. Yeah, of course, you can't be going around like, like what, we, what happens in Nigeria that um, you can be eating for pop on the road and you don't know the next thing you see yourself on Instagram. You have to respect people's space. Even me, when I'm vlogging, when I go to the mall to vlog, I am always super conscious. I make sure that I do not, um, people's faces don't appear on my vlogs. If they do, I edit it out. Or even if it does, maybe for just two seconds or something, I try to blur it because you don't want to be slammed with a lawsuit. Like, how dare you, you, you put my face out there without my consent and stuff like that. And you can't defend yourself. So you have to respect people's faces at all times. 14 is taxing. Hmm. My husband, hey <laughs> God, he laments for this particular one all the time. Like, you go to buy water, they tax you for it. You go to anything at all you're buying, so long as you're making sales, like you're purchasing, you're, they're taxing you. You work and you earn salary, they are taxing you. Everything at all you're doing in this country, they tax you. My man is always upset about this taxing stuff because he's like, okay, it is fine. I work, you tax my salary. That is fine. It is done everywhere. Now, the little one that is remaining with me, I go to the store to buy things. You still tax it again. I'm literally working for you. Okay? So, the taxing is something that I have learned to adjust to because there's nothing I can do. I have learned to... um adjust to it like when we went to buy our television here yeah, we paid we were taxed for buying the television and we asked to buy warranty we agreed and we are still taxed for the warranty my husband was almost ran mad that day so it is just insane the taxing is just insane and too much last but not the least phone bills in canada are extremely high this one this one gets to me every month the phone bill in canada is too much I have paid phone bill for a um, hundred and something dollars. Hmm, my dear, it is it is insane. This brings me to a story that I want to tell you. You guys, I almost got um, duped in this Canada. I kid you not. What happened was I got to Canada and I wanted to go get a SIM card. Yeah, so I I, I went to the mall and the first um, telecommunications company I saw was um, Roger. I got there and then they, I bought a SIM card with um, chat app. It was very affordable, I will not lie. But ever since I bought that SIM card, I like I did not have a minute of rest to myself. I, I just got to Canada. I don't know anybody. The only people that had my Canadian number with my family members. But the kind of calls I will get, you would think I've been here for a while. Ha! My phone will ring. It is if it's not an Indian person, it's a Chinese person, like calling me, speaking Chinese, speaking Indian language, you know, things that I don't understand, telling me, oh, click on, you have to, your credit score. I'm like, credit score, bro, I just got here. If they don't call me, they'll text me. If they don't text me, um, they call and I don't pick up, they'll leave a voicemail. It was insane. It was crazy. I couldn't take it anymore. I had to, you know, go get another SIM card. But before I could go do that, I got a call from my bank. They called me and asked me um, if I made any purchase online. And I'm like, no. I just got this um, debit card, actually. It's not even up to a week that I got my debit card. And I still had my Nigerian card, yeah? And I've been using my Nigerian card for almost every transaction. I do not... I just got my Canadian bank card. So they were like, okay, they're going to block my account because someone tried to take my money. You guys, I heard this and I had shivers down my spine. I froze, like I couldn't even speak. Someone tried to take my money. Money that I just got to Canada and opened an account and put. How? How is this even possible? And they told me to go to the bank and they would block my account. Speed! And I went to the bank and they were like, they have to block the account, block the card and give me another one. Yay, you guys, I, 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 I was just confused. So I had to call the, um, I think it's fraud, um, I think it's fraud alert or something like that. So I called their number and um, they were like, the person took uh, 
they were doing it in like in small batches and that's how they operate here they don't just take all your money they do it small small you get she said they took um 75 dollars first and then they took another 75 dollars before they suspected and then they called me to ask if i was the one and since i was not the one they blocked the account after asking me multiple questions they could see that i was a victim here and they said okay they were going to block it after blocking it they were going to refund back the money 150 dollars and they did after i blocked the account they gave me another card activated the card and then i saw my 150 dollars back they refunded me the money so and then that was the last show that was when i knew that i had to go and change that number i don't know how it happened if it was on the number that because somebody else was using that number before obviously so i don't know how that thing happened so i just went to change my sim card and i went to buy a fido line i got a fido sim card and the on insistent callings it stopped and after that fido was billing me crazily the bill from fido was it was it was annoying like 50 dollars come on it was insane so i had to switch from fido and move to bell and so far so good i've been enjoying bell bell is expensive but i love their network a lot the internet speed is top notch everything is just okay with them customer service is 100 everything is fine so this is me recommending bell to you guys bell is a very very good network that i can recommend to anyone that's what i use now so yeah you guys can try um bell funny enough in nigeria if you don't buy credit on your phone who cares nobody cares you just your phone will just be there you can't make call but you can receive call but here if you don't pay your monthly uh, phone bill for a while they will disconnect you you cannot make calls you cannot receive calls it's only wi-fi you can use and if you're not in the house no wi-fi if you're not in school or at work no wi-fi what do you do and here moving around you need you need your your phone because if you don't really know places and bus stops, you need your Google map to take you places or your transit app to take you places. So you need your phone and you need data. So you must pay. You must pay. So that's just everything. So these are the culture shocks that I have had since moving to Canada. And I thank God I have adjusted fully well and adapted to all of them. And I'm doing well now. Like... I have blended in and I have settled in fully. As you guys can see, I'm more relaxed in this video than my previous videos. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please and please subscribe to the channel. You guys, we, we are at 797 subscribers as I am filming this video. Please guys, I want us to get to 1000 subscribers before september ends and i know we can do this i know we can do this you guys the energy at which i got to 700 you guys i want that energy i know it's my fault it is my fault i backslide there because um i got overwhelmed with school work everything just overwhelmed me and i backslided from youtube i know but please i am back now and i'm begging you guys to come up with the same energy like you guys should come back with the energy please Please and please and please guys you guys should engage subscribe to the channel share to your friends and your your siblings everybody you can think of and push us to 1000 subscribers thank you so much for watching the video to the end and i'll see you guys in the next video bye trances, going all to different places different planets watch your own